Hey everyone, one of the challenges with Unity is that even though you can click on an object and look at it in the inspector, that there are many common functions that are not available directly in the inspector and that you have to create a script to make those changes. So in this video, we're going to look at how to avoid script spam, and that is making a whole bunch of scripts that do just one thing and are applied to just one object. What we're going to do, we're going to create just one script but by using public variables, we'll be able to make changes to that underlying functionality, even though you're not going to have to change the script. So you're going to have one script to rule them all, at least for that one component. So let's go to game object. We'll go to 3D object and we'll just create a cube and we're just going to move that over. Game object, 3D object. Let's make a sphere. Move that one over a little bit too. Game object, 3D object. Let's make a cylinder, move that one over, game object, 3D object, and we'll just make a capsule. Move that over. You could have used three blocks, or four blocks, whatever, it doesn't matter. So, we're going to right click, create, C sharp, and this will be the one script. Select Let's select our four objects, and we'll go Add Component. We're going to go to Physics, and then Rigid Body. And for this demonstration, I'm going to shut off Gravity. So one of the most common things you would do with a rigid body is you would apply velocity, yet velocity is not here. Another thing may be angular velocity. Angular velocity is not here. So. What if you have one object that is going to be moving vertically, and another object that's moving horizontally, and another one that's, say, rotating? Okay, You can do this all with just one script and not have them impact each other, and you don't have to use a bunch of if statements. In other words, if game object is cube, then do this. If game object is sphere, then do this. If game tag is this, then do that. You're not going to have to use a bunch of if statements. We're going to use public variables. So when we selected our objects and we added the rigid body, it's a separate rigid body for each and every object. Okay. We're going to select them all, and we're going to attach the script. Now we open up the script. And again, this is only for this one particular component. It's possible to do additional components with a single script, but this script would need to be attached only to objects with that component. In other words, all these objects have rigid bodies. So There's not going to be a problem. If you attach this to a script that doesn't have a rigid body, then you're going to start having problems. So we're going to get rid of this because this is just a remark statement. It's not executed. You can tell by the two forward slashes. So in other words, it's internal documentation only. Now, in the start section, because we want something to happen as soon as the object is instantiated or spawned, as it's referred to in gaming. So when the object is spawned, we want something to happen right away. So get component, rigid body, because again, we are modifying the rigid body component. And then say we want to change velocity. And it needs to be a vector 3, so it needs to have an x, y, and z velocity. So let's come up here, and we're going to create that public variable. So public, and we'll do vector 3, and it's going to be start vel, so whatever its starting velocity is. And that will automatically de default to a bunch of zeros. So there will be no velocity if you, don't, if you don't explicitly say what the velocity is going to be. So back down here, we're now going to put in the x, y, and z. So start val dot x. So we're pulling the x value out. Start val dot y. So we're pulling the y value out. And then start val dot z. So what we're going to do, we're going to save this, and we're going to go back to our scene. So say the square is moving along the 
z-axis in a positive direction. So with the cube selected, we come down here. So now, as you notice, it's not in the rigid body section, but it will indeed affect the rigid body. So we said z is going to be positive. Let's make it positive 1 just so it's not moving too quickly. And now we maybe we want this to be moving forward towards the camera. So that would be a negative 1. Maybe want this moving vertically up. So we'll make that a positive one. And maybe we don't want this to move at all. Now we're going to run this. Each one is independently running. So you used one script with just two lines of code, and yet you'll be able to control these, and you don't have to drill back down into the script. So if you apply this to 50 other objects, you don't have to drill back down into the script. You just have that top level uh, public variables. Now you can just keep building on this. So we mentioned angular velocity. So let's go back to our script. So get component, rigid body, angular velocity. And it's gonna be the same thing. We're gonna create a vector three. So that means we need to come up here and create a new variable. So public, Vector 3, and it'll be start ang vel. So your angular velocity. New vector 3. And again, we need to pull out the x, y, and z components. Uh, not components, excuse me, values. So start ing vel dot x start ingvel dot y start invel dot z and again this will default to zero so it won't impact the other ones or should i say it won't impact anything that you don't want it to so now we said that this one is going to be rotating so here we go start angular velocity and let's have it rotate uh, y really isn't wouldn't be noticed because it's it'd be spinning along the y-axis like a top. So let's have it spin along x at two. And now we run this. So as you see, these are not rotating. You wouldn't really be able to notice on the sphere, but the other ones are not rotating. So again, with a single script, you can modify object by object a certain attribute from a component so technically it's not in the rigid body component again it's in the script component but what you're actually doing is you're just putting in the values and then the values go into that statement that modify the component and you can just keep building on that so maybe you want an object that has force as soon as it is spawned or instantiated so let's go back to the script and we'll just jump right into making the variable this time since I've already gone through the explanation. So public vector 3 start force. And again, it'll default to 0. Get component rigid body. So add force. And then it's start force dot x start force dot y start force dot z. And again, it will default to zero. So let's create yet another object. So let's go to game object, 3D object, and I guess we'll just do another cube. We'll give it a rigid body. We'll put the script on it. And so start force. So say this is the only object that we want force to be applied to. So maybe it's 20, 15, 9, whatever, just randomly numbers. 
And again, it's just to demonstrate that only this object will be affected because if you come to the other objects, their force are all zero. Yeah, you know, actually, I forgot to get rid of gravity. Sorry about that. We'll do that one more time. You don't have to get rid of gravity. It's just in this case, since everything is floating, it it would not help. There we go. So it's it's moving. It was given some force. If you want, we can give it some more. There we go. So what else do we want to modify? Well, so far we have gravity not being enabled. So let's enable it on just one object. So let's create another object. So game object, 3D object, we'll create another sphere. Move this over. And we'll give it a rigid body. So add component, physics, rigid body. Again, gravity is not enabled. We apply the script to it. And then we go back to our script. And up here, we're going to add a different type of variable. So this is going to be public Boolean. And it's going to be enable grav. And by default, it's going to be false. It's not in quotes, so this is not the word false. This is a state. It's the state of false. And now we just add get component, rigid body, dot use gravity equals enable gravity or enable, gra enable grav. And we save that. And then on our new object, enable gravity. So again, just going through all these others, they all keep their own unique attributes. And even though these are all in the scene, if you're familiar with the concept of prefabs, like if I took one of these objects and I drag it down here and it's a prefab, all this would still be true, that you're making the change in the prefab, and every time that prefab is instantiated, it would have its unique properties, unique to that prefab, that is. So only that object has gravity enabled. There you go. And let's do one more. So you can affect how much drag an object has. So for instance, if you notice in the rigid body section, drag defaults to zero. So maybe one object has more drag than another. Maybe one object is on wheels, another, another one is not, whatever. One object is on ice, another one is not. And so you want to modify uh, drag by doing that. So we're already at zero. So maybe you'd actually start with a higher number than that, but for the moment, we'll keep uh, the default as zero. So right now, this object, you can see it's moving in the distance and it keeps going. There's no drag to slow it down. So what we're going to do, we're going to add drag. So let's go to our script up here. We'll add a new type of variable. So public and this will be a float that way it accepts decimals so it can be like 1.5 2.8 whatever so public float and this will be start drag and again you don't set it to anything it will default to zero get component Rigid body. And it's drag equals start drag. We save that. 
and what we'll do is we'll affect the drag just on this object. Now, for an extreme, we'll put this way high. We'll put it at 500. And again, sorry for repeating myself, but you're only modifying that one object. Okay. Now it's not moving. So what we'll do, we'll make it a much smaller drag. Let's do, say, just one. So it's moving, but you can see it slows down pretty quickly and stops. So again, that's something else that you can do with a rigid body. You can apply different levels of drag. And as I mentioned, that if you're going to be spawning these objects over and over again, then you're really going to make the change to the prefabs as opposed to the ones in the scene. So if you just drag and drop these into the asset area, Didn't mean to double click like that. We'll zoom back out. And we'll just, there we go. So what you do is you'd make the changes to the individual prefabs. They will retain those values. And then when you spawn the object, it will be spawned with all those initial values. So I think that should about do it. I hope that you found this helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know. Leave them in the comments field. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see. And uh, again, I hope you found this helpful and please enjoy the rest of your day.